What's up guys, it's Tony with 4Money. In this episode, I'm going to show you the $2,701 worth of trash that I found and sold in July of 2020. Let's do it. If you're new to the channel, welcome and thanks for stopping by. And if you're new to the series, I highly recommend you go check out the intro to Curbside Treasure 2020 where you can kind of get caught up on what's going on here. So these neighborhoods that I was going after, they have their bulk trash pickup at the same time that they have their normal trash pickup. Now this neighborhood that I'm showing you right here, you have to call the city for them to come pick up your bulk trash. But the neighborhoods that I was going after, they put bulk trash out every time they put out their normal trash. So it was easier for me to find stuff like this. I'm gonna highlight my favorite item and I'm even gonna show you some items that I kept and some that I gave away. Okay, this first group of items is all golf related. As a golfer, it really hurt to find these, but it also felt good to save them from a landfill and it felt even better to sell them. We had $227 in golf sales in these four pictures right here. We've got this Callaway driver that sold for 57, this TaylorMade driver that sold for 50, this TaylorMade putter that sold for 60, and this full set of golf clubs that sold for 60. To me, finding golf stuff was incredible. So the total distance from my house to these neighborhoods back to my house was about 30 miles total round trip. So I spent about $60 per month just driving around. All right, so this month we had $100 worth of sales in electronics. These two Dell monitors, when I found them, I thought they were broken. For sure, we're not gonna work. They ended up working, I tested them out, 100 bucks sold in a few days people were starting to work from home so this one made total sense 100 bucks for these and these tvs i started picking them up thinking man this was a gold mine turns out when somebody throws a tv out it's because it's trash so i ended up just making a video destroying tvs because these had no value whatsoever other than throwing them in the trash or making a video destroying them up next we have our furniture category we had 469 dollars worth of furniture we had this breakfast table that my wife really loved but i sold it for 100 bucks we had this executive chair that sold for 50. we had these three bar stools that sold for 20 bucks they took way too long but they did sell and then we had this office chair i didn't really pick up many more after this this one sold for 14 bucks and then next we have this bombay entry table that sold on ebay for 220 bucks after shipping and fees the profit on this one was 130. I found and sold this broken table for 40 bucks. The top of it was actually pretty good, but the legs were not in great shape. That's why I priced it for $40. The person who bought it was very thrilled because they were just gonna refurbish it. And then the last furniture sale of the month was these three little Ikea chairs that I sold for 15 bucks. Probably could have sold for more, but I also could have got nothing. We had $190 worth of sales in kid related items. This John Deere, little tractor sold for $90. I actually posted it for 74 and people were offering me more just to hold it for them. It was not my intent to sell it for more, but the demand drove the price up. This little Tykes car sold for 20. This little Ikea table with four chairs sold for $22. And this high chair right here sold for 20 bucks. And this Minnie Mouse bed sold for $10. I didn't think that one was gonna sell for that cheap, but it took too long to sell, so I just kept dropping the price. $10 was just so that I wouldn't throw it away. And this last one of the month was this Bumbo chair that I sold for eight bucks. Now you might be thinking, eight bucks, probably not worth your time, but look, you go to Chipotle and you don't get guac because it's $2. Well, you sell a Bumbo chair, you can get guac four times now. All right, I'm very excited for this next category of lawn equipment. $495. I found and sold five lawn mowers. Five lawn mowers. I could not believe it when I pulled up to any house and I saw a lawn mower on the curb. And every single lawn mower, the issue was a dirty carburetor. And that was it. And I wanted to make sure these things worked. So I took the carburetor out, I sprayed the intake, sprayed the carburetor, put fresh gas in it, started them all. And with each lawnmower sale, I made sure to cut my own yard with them first. So I knew they were in great condition. And I told everybody, if it doesn't work for some reason, just bring it back. 
and not a single return in lawnmowers the entire year. I also found these two pressure washers, the same issue as the lawnmower, a dirty carburetor. And this last picture here is these two weed eaters that I sold to the guy who bought the green John Deere mower that I just showed you. Up next, we have these two dryers. I picked them up thinking it was a washer dryer combination. These sold for 90 bucks. I took them home, left them on my truck, posted them the way you see them right here and $90 somebody came and picked them up the following day i pushed them from my truck to their truck quick sale i could not test them you are buying them as is parts only and they bought them both for 90 bucks i think that was a pretty good deal 340 dollars worth of sales in bikes in the month of july i was pretty thrilled when i started finding these bikes i couldn't believe people were actually getting rid of bikes and i began to realize that people were throwing them out because there was something minor that needed to be fixed now if it was just a tire or a tube or brakes or something, it was enough to convince the person that the whole bike needed to be replaced. And I get it, it happens, but I picked them all up and I sold them for 340 bucks, mostly to one guy who would repair bikes and resell them at his garage sale that he would have every week. So that worked out pretty well for me because I didn't have to post these individual bikes all the time. I would just send them to him and he'd come by and pick them up. I wish I could say I was the only person out there finding stuff, but there was competition. Guys with bigger trucks, guys with flatbeds, Suburbans, hitch racks. Sometimes I'd drive around for 30 minutes and not find anything, and then I'd see a truck pass by full of stuff. Kind of discouraging, but also motivating for me to just go out there a little sooner and find stuff before them. I could tell you where I'm going, the time to go, the streets to drive through, and you might not find something. One, because there's competition, and two, because people don't throw out good stuff all the time. Now, every route, I did at least find one good thing, but sometimes it was at the beginning of the route, and sometimes it was at the very end. We had $390 worth of sales in these sporting good items. This seven foot kayak, man, this one really takes the cake. The guy who bought this one was very thrilled to find a kayak that he could use for lake photography. That was really awesome. These dumbbells, I could not understand why somebody would throw them out. Maybe because they had a little bit of rust, but they were still in really good shape. This barbell sold pretty quickly as well. This ab workout sold for 20 bucks. The lady picked it up and she asked me to demo it in the driveway and I did and I asked her to demo it. She did it too. I told her to follow up with me in a month. She came by two months later to my garage sale and said, hey, I still have that workout thing. I have not done it, but I plan to soon. This Gold's Gym Aerobic Step sold for 20 bucks. And finally, this elliptical here sold for $110. A buddy of mine was actually with me when we picked this one up. The homeowner was still in his driveway. I lowered the window down, gave him a thumbs up. He gave me a thumbs up. My buddy jumped off the truck, loaded this thing up by himself, and we were gone. And my little internal rule was do not hold an item for more than two weeks. I would just drop the price every day until it sold. And I gave everybody the opportunity to bring it back. If they didn't like it, they changed their mind, it broke. This is on the Facebook Marketplace. And me offering a return on the, on the local Facebook Marketplace is unheard of. I only had one return in September, and that's because it didn't fit. And I ended up selling it at the garage sale for more. So it worked out pretty good. This next category is dedicated to tools. We had $114 in sales. I found this wheelbarrow. It only needed one washer to make the bucket stay on the frame. Very easy fix. This dolly I sold for $34. And then this fan right here, I sold it for $26. I want to kind of brief you in on my pricing. If something sells for $34, $66, 72 88 that's because that was my asking price i always priced something to leave room for negotiations now if something sold for 55 60 65 70 that's because it was a negotiated price down from my asking price this next one is going to be my favorite one of the month hands down by far very cool find it's this pit boss pellet smoker that i sold for 150 dollars when I pulled up to this house, I was in disbelief that somebody actually put this out for trash pickup. I had a hard time convincing myself that this was actually trash. It was only about seven in the evening, the sun was still out. I go walking towards the front door of this house and before I even get to the driveway, the homeowner walks out, 
gives me a thumbs up says go ahead and take it man it's all yours so as i'm walking away he says it's pretty heavy that that doesn't help me at all but i'm pretty sure he was looking through the window trying to see how i was going to load this thing up it was extremely heavy i could barely roll it so i see this jogger across the street and i, I wave him down i say hey man can you help me load this smoker he comes running over no problem doesn't even take his headphones out and he's still kind of running in place helps me lift this thing on the truck i tie it down and i'm gone i get home take a picture within about five minutes this guy prepays me through venmo 150 dollars picks it up asks me why i was selling it so cheap and i straight up told him i said look man one of my neighbors just throwing this thing out and he said man that's a great find wasn't even upset that it was in the trash he was more happy to get a great deal on such an expensive pellet smoker and finally we have our little miscellaneous category 236 dollars worth of sales so this diaper genie it's got the genie inside the box but i actually sold the empty box first i don't know why but they wanted to buy the box so i sold it to them for five bucks and then a couple days later somebody actually bought the genie for 15. that was kind of strange but it sold and then we have these other items we have a big dog kennel we have these three dog cages we got these coolers we have this little trio of luggage which over time i really didn't pick up anymore these speakers i didn't get to test them i sold them as is the guy messaged me later saying that they worked really good finally we have this barbature another cool item almost as cool as the pellet smoker so i drive past this house and i see the barber's chair maybe about 15 feet away from the trash can but still past the curb it didn't quite look like trash to me so i drive past it and i go down the end of the street as i'm coming back the homeowner is in the middle of the road weighs me down and i thought i'm in trouble i'm like oh dear god like he sees my truck full of stuff and i'm thinking he's gonna tell me something he's gonna make me wait for the cops or i don't know what's going on he says hey man do you want to take this chair <laughs> i kind of chuckled i was like yeah man like i appreciate it so i took the chair home i posted a few pictures of it and it sold in one day for 80 bucks really cool encounter with the homeowner could have gone much worse but the guy was thrilled for me to take it he wanted to get rid of it but he didn't want to put it in the trash so he was glad that i stopped by and picked it up he said sell this thing man it's all yours and i was super thrilled to find that chair really cool all right now here are some items that i just didn't pick up Now we have a few items that I just gave away. Finally, a few things that I kept. Very, very nice table that I probably could have sold for a hundred bucks, but I'm glad I kept it. And this was another one that I had an experience with a homeowner. So I pull up to this house and I see it there on the curb and I start picking it up and it's extremely heavy. The homeowner comes running out of the house like in full sprint. I said, wait, 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 wait. And I just like froze. I said, I'm sorry. I thought it was trash. He said, no, 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 no. It is trash, but be careful. The top glass comes off. I was like, oh my God, man, my heart was racing. I thought this guy is about to beat me up for taking something from his curb. So I take it home and we still have it right now. We use it almost every day. Now from July through December, not very often did a house put something good out and then put something good out again. It was just like a one-off instance where they would get rid of something really good. My whole objective of For Money is flip to fund your passion. I buy and sell stuff to one, buy more stuff to sell and two, to play golf. To me, every time I go play golf or go to the range, from selling an elliptical or dumbbells or a lawnmower, using that money to fund my passion is really cool. All right guys, we'll see you in the August episode.